Oh, hi. I have a plan, I have a plan. You see, um, I have uh, this little bag, and in it I have a thing that I'd like to make a few videos on. Not just one video, but a few short ones. But what is this? What's in this tiny bag? Actually, uh, the first thing I have in it is uh, quite a big one. It's a big lens. And uh, the other thing is uh, this one. This is the Fujifilm GFX 50S medium format camera. I'm all excited. And there has been some arguing that if you could actually call this camera a medium format camera. And if you take a look at the sensor, I think you can. Let me see if I can turn it so you can see it. This one is quite a bit bigger than a full frame. It is 44 millimeters wide, and that is bigger than full frame. So you can't call it a full frame, but you can call it a medium format. You can't really call it anything else. You could call it a smaller medium format camera, but it's the same size as the new Hasselblad, you know, the new really pretty one that looks like B&O. That's fine. There's a reason why I really like this. And there's a reason why I like Fujifilm in the first place. And that is because it has quite analog controls. They remind me so much about the old cameras I used in the 80s. And it doesn't confuse me. It doesn't remind me of a computer. And let me tell you why I like it. Here, on this ring, you control the aperture. And some DSLRs you control the aperture right here. Or quite a lot of full frame cameras. You can also control it here if you like. You just set it to C, here, C, and then control it with this. I don't like that. I like to control it here where I control it always. And the reason why I think it's logical to control it on a ring, on the lens itself, is because you control the aperture right in the lens. It's sitting right there. So it makes some sense you open it or you close it down. Open, close down. It makes complete sense. It's like turning a wheel, you know, it's right there. You just turn it. You don't have to do something over here to make this work. You do it where it is. Same with focus. Focus is here if you do it manually. And I like to do it manually. It's super precise, it doesn't take too long. You can focus pretty fast and do it really precise. And then there's your exposure triangle, of course. The aperture here, just where it should sit. And then your shutter speed. If you have it on auto, it's automatic. And then you can press this little button and do some exposure compensation just by turning the rear wheel. I seldom use it because I go into manual mode by turning the shutter dial. And if I need to adjust the ISO, I have it just right here on a knob and I can just look down and see this is my settings. They don't change. They're right there. That's how it's set up. It is totally logical. I don't have to go into a menu and figure out how I set this camera up. It's just right there. Super easy. Another thing is when I turn it on, all the exact same settings I've set up here is displayed here. It might be to satisfy some people who come from other uh, medium format cameras or any DSLR users. I think it's a bit funny because you can just see the knobs, that's the adjustments. But so you can look at this and say, well, okay, it says the same. But if you're used to looking at a small LCD screen, then that's one for you. So it's very analog in a way. The controls are super analog and you don't have to adjust a program wheel to tell anything what it is. Now I have to be in aperture priority and turn the wheel and it will adjust the aperture. And then set it into shutter speed priority or whatever it's called. And then it's suddenly shutter speed. It makes no sense to me. This makes sense to me. Shutter speed here, 
Aperture right here, ISO right there. Done deal. Not too much. Then you have your Q menu. The Q menu is like your back in the old day when you chose a analog film from the shelf. I'll do this one today and put it in the camera. You just set it up. Today I'll go with classic chrome. Dude, and then I'll maybe beef up the color a bit and maybe lower or heighten the contrast, whatever. Then I've sort of chosen how my JPEG should look. They will not affect the raw files at all. None whatsoever. The only thing that affects the raw files are your software. When a raw file comes out of it and you export it to your software, there'll be some metadata that tells the software what it is and where it came from and what shutter speed and whatnot. And then your software will do some adjustments to it that the company that made the software made a decision on how to read the file. And then they do some sharpness adjustment and all, all that, but that's just basis. They also add some saturation or whatever. That's your base point. They chose it because they think it's as close as you get to a point where you can work from. So don't complain about it, it's just how it is. The raw file is a raw file is a raw file. It's a raw file. You can reset the whole thing and it will be completely flat. You can start from the other, it's much easier. So if you import it into Lightroom, then the settings there is a good starting point. If you do it into Iridium Developer, it's a good starting point. If you do it into Fujifilm's own Selkipix, which has become much better than it ever was, that's a good starting point. Or if you know how to trick Capture One to read the raw files, and there's a way, you can just Google it, then you have to work a bit more or you can find a profile that matches this. It's pretty easy. So it's simple, super simple. It's as easy as working an analog camera. There's not much to it. Only thing is that one file, if you take it at full resolution, takes up a bit of space, to say the least. And um, that takes a while to read to the cards. You have to get used to that because it's much bigger than your regular Fujifilm X camera or a DSLR camera there's a bit more data to read to the card. With this Fujifilm GFX 50S, if you like old SLR cameras or the old style 6x6s, I think this is for you because it's a bit of the same language. It's the same way to handle. It has a bit of the same psychology to it. You don't have to compromise with this. I know I sound like a fanboy, more or less I probably am because I really like the, the analog controls. It just works really well for me. I feel like I, I've come home. This is like an old friend. And when you see the files that comes out of it, there's really nothing to complain about. There's only one thing you can complain about while using this, and that is this, the photographer. Because this will show if this one is not good, but this one will help you do the best that you can be. There's no excuses anymore. I, I really love it. And it's actually the cheapest digital medium format camera you can get. But you can work it as you like. If you're an old uh, analog style medium format photographer, you can just jump aboard. It's, it's quite easy to use because it's so analog already, or the controls are set up like that. This was just my praise of this beautiful camera. I've been shooting with it for a couple of weeks and uh, I, I've just enjoyed it immensely because of the files that comes out of it. And I'll run some pictures right after this. I'll just show you what you can expect from it. And I've done most of it in just natural light. It's really fun to use. It's, it sort of makes you concentrate better because you know the files are quite big and don't want to fill up your, your hard disk too, too fast, so you don't just click away. I had the experience that I sort of slow down, and I asked my model as well to slow down and take fewer pictures, but better, and concentrate on getting the light right, getting the pose right, getting everything right, and then take a picture. It's almost just like going back to film, because you don't want just to shoot away like with smaller cameras. You have a tendency just to shoot many pictures. But with this, you concentrate more and take that one picture that you want. And then you say, OK, I got it. I'm going to Iceland, and I'll bring it, and I'm going to film it. The GFX, it's cool. Yeah. I'm all excited. See ya. <laughs>